is is that we get to present visions at whatever phase of incubation they they currently exist. And I experienced something this past weekend that has shifted my vision for what my life gets to be about. And so I, I felt like if there were no speaker today, then there would be a speaker today. Uh, so uh, what what I want to do first is share a little story from when I was running this food truck with my mentor, Bob Petrillis. And uh, part of that was, part of that experience was I got to live in his basement with his wife and, um, not with his wife, but, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> anyway. Um, so he was running this food truck from 1960 to the year 2000. Same entrepreneur, same recipe, same everything. And there was one day I'm living in the basement and he is like giddy. You're just, he just needed to tell me something. And I'm like, Bob, what is it? He's like, you're not gonna get, you're not gonna, you're not gonna understand the magnitude of what, what just happened. What is it? He's like, I'm gonna order pre-shredded mozzarella for the French bread pizza. <laughs> Let me contain my excitement, <laughs> you know? Uh, and I'm like, well, why are you so excited? And he's like, well, I can afford pre-shredded mozzarella. Why are you so excited? He said, Eric, it takes me 11 hours a week to shred mozzarella cheese manually. So by figuring out that it was more cost-effective for him to buy pre-shredded mozzarella than to shred these blocks of the mozzarella, it was just like, that story has kind of traveled with me for 30 years. So fast forward to this weekend, I participate in the Mind Valley AI Summit. And that's where the story of this very analog production line in making French bread pizza met head on with what I felt the power of AI could be. So what I'm inviting all of you to do is to be part of this new exploration where I just, I felt it in every cell in my body that I wanna create a firm that sets out to use AI, like employ AI to get anyone, anyone, well, mostly executives, 11 hours back in their week. So just figuring out reverse engineering your work week, your work month, your work day, and really ask the question, like, couldn't AI do this? And once we figure that out, could it be 11 hours a week? And then, you know, what would your business do or be if you had 11 more hours a week? One of the most amazing statistics that they threw out this weekend was that if you're a knowledge worker in any form of knowledge working, on average you spend 20% of your time doing research. So if you look at the average work week, let's just say it's 40 hours, but we know it's not. We know it's probably 50, closer to 60 if you're entrenched. So let's just say it's 55 hours, 20% of that time spent doing research. What's that number? 11 hours. So um, I just, I feel like the, what I love about this community specifically is we are all like more, we spend more of our time in question marks than answers sometimes because we're entrepreneurs. So, so I invite you all to just be part of this new exploration. And what I, what I need the most help on is actually figuring out the value proposition. You know, so like if, if, I'm, if this technology or this agency is saving people 
11 hours a week, what's that worth to you? You know, I, I know that it's invaluable and yet the business wants to be sustainable and profitable. So like, um, so part of me thinks that I want to meet people halfway. So we figure out what 11 hours a week for a year would earn someone and for that year I'll split it with them and for the rest of their lives they they have that extra you know time per week and then as AI gets smarter and smarter maybe it's 12 hours maybe it's 15 maybe it's 20 you know or maybe the business just grows exponentially because of all the other efficiencies we find so that's basically all I have today, like more of it is, is just question marks because what I've already, I mean, and I'm like, I wouldn't say, I'm a, an early adopter for sure, but I'm by no means an expert. But the things that they trained me to do have replaced most of the people I would have needed to outsource any of my business operation to or with. So, um, so with that, internal and external knowledge they literally had a workshop on how to build an app in an hour so i mean it's just what i know for sure with ai we just get to up our game so even if you don't you know take those 11 hours a week and bank them and go to costa rica like i'm wanting to do uh, <laughs> like uh you can do so many more things, and you can be an agency of one if you want to be. Um, and so that's what I'm getting excited to, to share with you all, but but also explore with you all, because um, I don't want to do it as a one-man wrecking crew. I've been that before. Uh, it works out for some time, but it gets lonely. So um, if there are any entrepreneurs in the room who want to be you know, patient one. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I sir. I'd like to be patient one. Mm. Um, I, you know, it's funny, you were at the office this, this Sunday, we, we talked a little bit about this. It's something I didn't share with you uh, that, that I wish I had, but I'm going to share now, is I created something uh, for entrepreneurs, and this is for everybody. Uh, and it's kind of still in a, in a rough form, but it works. Um, and it's a time study. And basically, I figure there's like eight uh, key activities that we as entrepreneurs have to be engaged in um, as, as we you know, apply our trades. And I wanted to be able to see where, what I was doing with my time. And so I started keeping track of, of all of that in a little you know, digital way. And then um, I'm able to graph out at the end of the week uh, what activities I did and what how many hours I spent doing what, and to be able to see that visual uh, representation of what I'm doing with my time has been extremely helpful. I also use a little bit of a, a, a diary and things like that. The reason I bring that up is I'll offer that <laughs> and say, say, if you don't know what your time is actually going to, mm -hmm. first maybe you want to do a time study. Mm -hmm. And then now you've got my mind uh, going because I can go back now and look at some of those things start thinking about where AI can be leveraged uh, to, to, um, uh, to maximize those activities. Those activities have to be done, but sometimes I'm doing them out of order. I'm, I'm spending more time in, in planning than I should when I should be you know, prospecting. I'm spending more time doing one thing that I'm not, and I can see that graphically once I look at it. But now this idea of going back and looking at it with the lens of how can AI actually make me improve my business activities, I love that. I actually, I, I'm laughing because I, I did a time study on myself using Clockify when I was uh, in a faculty role. It was a hybrid role, so I was trying to do like multiple things. And I actually just got it back out this morning. <laughs> Because I was like, I, I was looking at my yard and I was like, I, I don't have any time for reading. Like, I have to get that time back. Because yeah. it, it, it's pretty bad. So. I think I'm busy. 
But I'm, at the end of the week, I'm not doing something. I know that I accomplished anything. Right. And so the time study piece really let me see my behavior during the week, and then I keep a little diary so I can see, you know, track how, I, how I'm feeling. And then I recognize that sometimes I'm spending more time on the things that I like to do. Like for me, I love to do planning, right? But I'm not prospecting when I plan it. And if I'm not prospecting, I'm not I'm not making any money, basically. I'm not setting myself up to win. So just so, but hey, I can help me with my prospecting. Yeah. So I just want to say I like your idea. I can definitely say for me, um, AI has definitely helped me shore up some time in the office. Um, show of hands, how many people are in the food industry here? Or want to get into the food industry or have been in the food industry? Happen. Okay. Oh. So it takes a lot of time with menu development, yields, and things like that. And we also, we offer classes at UCDI with just that. We bring in a specialist to teach that. It's very time consuming. And the hospitality market is one of the biggest markets out there, right? It incorporates hotels, your average restaurant, your McDonald's. And it's so time consuming building up that recipe, doing the menu yields to get that return on investment, right? So I could definitely see a need for the hospitality market with that. So for example, we do a farm stand at ECD where we give out free produce to the community. Um, and one of the things that we had to do was build recipes. So I used the chat box to help me build recipes with the ingredients that we had that we were growing for the community to know that you can make delicious, fresh, low cost foods with what we're growing in our gardens. So I can definitely see something like that for specifically for food, right? The chat box is everything. So it's a master of a lot, you know, well, it can do a lot, but a master of none, right? Right. So if you build an AI where it can do something at the same time, right. it can save food entrepreneurs so much time, which is one of the fastest growing industries, right? Because everybody thinks that they can cook or they think right. they're gonna have business. Sure, right. But I see it all, you know, when I help people with like their business, um, their food business, I've seen all the different businesses, and right now there's also a lot of bakers and food truck people jumping into the industry. Um, and it's very time consuming when you're trying to develop, okay, this is what my recipe is going to be, these are the ingredients, okay, well, is this, Yes, this is expensive. People aren't buying this, but I get a really good return when people do buy it, right? You can have an AI help you make those hard decisions. Or let's say, I'm gonna have all these different types of ingredients. How can I incorporate these ingredients with every recipe so I'm not having loss, right? Well, the AI can let you know, okay, this is what you do. Or take this ingredient out. It's not here. It doesn't really add flavor. Mm -hmm. Add it or add this in it because it might know flavor profiles, which saves you. 11 plus hours, right? right? Sure. It also saves you manpower. Mm -hmm. um, you can have it break down um, how much time does it, you need to prep successfully, right? Because prepping is a main part of the business. So I think there's a lot of applications for it in the food industry, mm -hmm. which is a trillion, almost a trillion dollar industry wow. as it is now, so. That's awesome. Um, so you were asking what the value of it is, and mm -hmm. I thought of two things. Um, I know right now, for saying that one of, one of the, the the tagline that got me into the AI summit was simply put you won't be replaced by AI you will be replaced by someone who knows how to use AI <laughs> so yeah so I'm actually um, a creator a creative I'm a creative graphic designer and I'm a business consultant and so it really uh, got me was that I ended up having to do more business consulting and graphic designing for people to even get their design, right? They didn't have a brand identity, they didn't have a business plan. And so um, what I did was I became a master at prompting. 
And so with that, you're able to, you know, talk with the person, pull out the knowledge, and then help them craft a business plan that can be refined by ECI or refined to let them have something. A lot of people have ideas, but they don't even know how to build. And so AI is a building tool. But even as a graphic designer, coming up with concepts, and people are like, well, I like this color, this color, this color, it actually pulls the hex codes for you in the color scheme, with brand identities. I mean, it pulls a whole um, structure for you to even uh, design. And if you are a good designer, you should be able to look at this, and now it becomes your profile. Mm -hmm. You should be able to create based off of that. And so, um, and it's actually a lot better than Mid Journey, because Mid Journey gives you images, but this gives you a base and a direction mm -hmm. that you can go in. And so, um, it helps just creating so many different things. So, just think about marketing. Um, that's one of the biggest reasons mm -hmm. why businesses fail, because right. they don't have the, they don't know how to market and they have flawed plans. So, if you're able to now talk about okay, not only the uh, psychological effects. I was just listening to um, Seven uh, Habits of Highly Effective People, the four-hour work week, right? Mm -hmm. He was already automating things right. before AI really became a tool. Although AI has always been here, if you're a writer, you know, Grammarly, WordPress, yeah. we've always had these things. Right. So we can't really, you know, I think ChatGPT took the world by storm, but for people who've used AI, it's already been there. Right. So I'm just saying, like, just the foundational piece of just, you know, building a business and creating when uh, you know you want to be original because it does formulas and patterns, mm -hmm. you can really see a lot of people's time. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, I'm so grateful you mentioned Tim Ferriss and the, the four hour work week. So I read that book in 2008 and then had the fortune of being able to attend a conference where he was one of the presenters. And then he did a breakout workshop. And I re this is 2008, mind you, like 15 years. Uh, and I raised my hand after his presentation and I said, Tim, uh, I feel like I'm spending 15 hours a day preparing for my four hour work week. <laughs> and the rest of the audience like laughed that really nervous laugh that yeah. basically said me too. <laughs> uh, so, you know, look at where technology has gone in 15 years. And I mean, you're right, it's been here all along. But we're, I feel like we're evolving with the technology and almost able to plug in as humans with a different download nowadays than, than perhaps my mentor who was giddy about the cheese, you know, may have been able to experience. Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking about, I'm diving in deep now, I'm thinking about the product as a whole and, uh, you know, if you're trying, what kind of product you are trying to build, whether it be um, something that runs in the background like as a software or a plugin or something that is web-based. Um, I don't know how far down that road you've gotten so far, but also just some questions to think about in what sector of people's business lives do you want to present solutions for using AI and thinking about like, you know, uh, marketing or finance or HR or, um, you know, planning for food operations. There's so many different ways to go down. And so do you want, I would say like some questions to begin to ask yourself are, do you want to niche down and focus on one specific industry or one specific department um, first? Or do you want to create something that can say, be more generalized and be say like a plugin that works with people's calendars that then like finds time or works with people's documents that helps them organize better. Um, so just kind of thinking about those things. To right. With. Well, I mean, to, you know, given that this is presentation one, yeah. <laughs> you know, or yeah. maybe 1.5, given that Mark and I had a conversation on Sunday <laughs> right after the, you know, the summit ended, uh, there are, there are lots of ways that this could go. I feel like having sort of like a, the first 10 clients inform the rest of that process because I feel like there are still some people who like the relational aspect of working with a human. So, you know, I would create a consulting agency that would, you know, have that human interaction that would say, okay, tell me about your work week and let's, you know, maybe do the manual part of that time tracking, you know, process. And then, then we might, I mean, like I said, they taught us how to build an app in an hour. So, I mean, we could we could automate a good amount of it or 
for AI in a good amount of ways. Yeah. <clears throat> With AI, the more the more you know about a specific ch- subject, the more AI can help you. Mm-hmm. So you get people in their specific field to help you build out uh, specific plans uh, for what you need. Uh, to Miss Lady's point, I watched the movie Great Debaters, and in that movie, the supervisor walks in and sees the IBM machine. She doesn't freak out and think that their jobs are over. She understands that she has to now learn how to work the machine. So she goes back and tells the girls, hey, listen, ladies, our job is about to be obsolete, but if we learn how to work this machine, we're going to be fine. So, and to this lady's point, prompting. If you can come up with the prompts, that's really the biggest thing when it comes to AI. Most people don't know exactly what to ask AI, so they spend a lot of time walking it down the street until they kind of get, AI kind of tells them what they need, you know what I'm saying? So if you can have prompts already developed for specific industries, get with somebody like my man from ECDI who already understands what you're looking for, right? But work with him, get some prompts together for the food industry. Then you go to finance, you get with somebody who understands the what line of questioning someone may have, then you already can have prompts. And with these larger businesses and things like that, instead of going to them with, hey, we can individually work with each person. No, I have a set of prompts for this department, which will help them to get into the right line of questioning. And then it'll open them up to what they individually need. I think everybody's having good conversations here with good questions. Yeah. Um, I completely agree. Um, I think that you can always do something, like to your point, to like a Salesforce approach, where and you said you want to keep the human element, where they have like a standard uh, program, however, they allow you to build out. So for ECDI, we've been building out um, our Salesforce, probably different from a lot of different corporations because we have a different mission. Mm-hmm. So like as the incubation program, we implemented our new website we just built into Salesforce that we integrated mm-hmm. it. So everything submitted from the website goes straight into Salesforce. So mm-hmm. it stops like that back end. So you can have something like that to your point where it's built out specifically the human element where you have the consultant come in, you right. know, it's not everybody's tech savvy, mm-hmm. right? And a lot of people who run these big corporations aren't. Right. Um, so you can always do something like that where it's built out for the company. You have already 10 players or something like that. That already works because you already have a good product. Right. But you'll go to, let's say, Chase Bank or something like that and say, okay, now we can, you know, uh, adapted to your thinking, but your certain criteria that you want in each case. Yeah. I have another thought. I'm just just wondering if there's research already out there on where are the biggest you know places people's time kind of going. Like if, it's, yeah. if it's already some common themes, then maybe you can target those areas to start off and mm-hmm. kind of have packages for those or something mm-hmm. like that as a way to start off. Right. AI right now, there's so many 